I don't even know why I feel like talking about it's stupid other than the fact that everybody's talking about it. And it's weird because it's starting to split up a lot of the right wing community on YouTube. And that is the whole Crowder conspira uh, conspiracy, the whole fucking Brett first Steven Crowder said, hey, look, we are going to join some guys, but they gave us a shitty deal. And you know what? They're they're in bed with big tech. And so fuck them. And then the people he's talking about but didn't name came out and admitted who they were and said, here's the deal we offered him. We thought it was pretty fair. And then everybody argued about the deal and shit. And some people were like, oh, well, they tried to fuck Crowder over by lowballing him or something. And and um, Crowder's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, although he's not going to lose money for long because the guy's hugely popular. But the thing was, Crowder was acting like he's taking a stand against Big Con or the, basically the conservative establishment and basically saying I'm, I'm you know, a different kind of conservative where I don't sell out. Yes, he does. Okay. Who was the, the people that Crowder was going to sell out to, but they lowballed him? The same uh, group that uh, Jordan Peterstein, oh, I almost, I almost said the joke name, Juden Peterstein. No, Jordan Peterson, of course, sold out. And I made a big video about him, about fuck him. He sold out and he's out there like screeching about internet an anonymity and making, you know, paid pieces talking about how Israel's so great and the Jews are the greatest, you know, race on earth and all this stupid shit, right? He's being go, you know, full pure Zionist. Which, you know, hey, you do whatever you want, man, but you're going to lose credibility with some people when you talk like that, obviously. Uh, and even if it had nothing to do with the kind of shit that I, you know, take issue with, the whole, um, Z word. Really, the major problem with him that I thought was absolutely inexcusable was his stance against internet anonymity and anonymity being crucial to resisting tyranny. The fact that a man who made a whole career talking about resisting tyranny doesn't understand the value of anonymity is disgusting and reprehensible and incomprehensibly fucking stupid. But we're talking about Steven Crowder here, right? So, yes, if you kind of look at the way the deal works and look at the rights that basically the daily wire would have taken over for Crowder, taken basically completely over his brand. It's understandable that he would consider rejecting the deal. Some people think it's shady the way he rejected the deal, you know, talking mad shit, recording in, uh, conversations with these people and sort of taking a term wage slave, which is, or wage cuck, which is basically a slang term, meaning, yeah, we don't pay you very much until you've built up your reputation in the company, otherwise known as what every capitalist country, company does to new hires. Um, it just makes Crowder come off like a diva. But of course, if you say that, well, then you're siding with the Daily Wire. Folks, do you know what a false dichotomy fallacy is? That's like saying, if I take a stance against Daily Wire, I necessarily support Crowder. Or even worse, vice versa. If I call Crowder a bitch boy fucking baby sellout who's basically trying to portray himself as some man of the people and not as a as a shill that he completely is that i somehow automatically support daily wire how about fuck the both of them now if i had to pick one i would obviously side with crowder because fuck the daily wire and everything that neoliberal fucking shill organization israel first organization that it is fuck them fuck ben shapiro Fuck Candace Owens. Fuck all those people. I don't give a fuck about them, and I wish them nothing but failure and hardship. But I don't like Crowder very much. Now, not to extend this video past to a second topic for too long, but I've mentioned something a little bit in passing, but I want to just double down on this. There is a sphere of acceptable edginess that it is very clear that's going on with your kind of baseline normie blue pill fucking conservatives okay the first thing and jordan peterson was like the advent of this is despite the the illusion that this whole thing is us versus the woke i mean if you know anything about me or this channel or have watched any of my other videos you know that woke is a smoke screen for the real enemy and the real enemy includes right-wing organizations. It includes Fox News, which is controlled opposition. It concludes the Daily Wire, which is 1,000% controlled 
controlled opposition. It includes PragerU for the same reason, okay? These are not your friends. These are not pro-U. These are not pro-America. These are not pro-conservatism in any way. These are pro-keeping you in milk toast opinions. However, what Jordan Peterson became famous for is anti-transgender... Not, he's not even anti-transgender. He's just anti, you can't make me do your pronouns or you can't force me to accept that you're a woman or a man, okay? That is 1,000% mainstream. You're not going to find a pro-transgender person on the Daily Wire, okay? You're not going to find that from anybody who's still monetizable on YouTube like Mark Dice. Despite how the establishment in the media really wants you to cut off your dick in give your kids hormone therapy, okay, and and not gender your babies and shit and put your boys in dresses, all that shit. The establishment also is clearly not preventing people from resisting that. It's like a paper target set up as a smokescreen for the shit that they don't want you to talk about. Now, any of the shit that, again, if you've been watching my channel, you think anybody that's still on YouTube and hasn't been kicked off, like, say, like an Owen Benjamin or something like that, for saying shit like I'm saying, who's still around? The closest guy I, I watch, and I don't watch everybody, who's anywhere near my opinion is Mark Dice. So, of course, it, it was a little disheartening to see people keep completely misunderstand what Mark Dice was saying about Steven Crowder and, the, you know, calling him scummy. And everyone's like, okay, well, Crowder, well, you know, Dice took a couple major shots at, at Crowder two days in a row. Clearly, he must be a Daily Wire shill. Uh, no, Mark Dice has been anti-Daily Daily Wire from, like, day fucking one. The guy talks mad shit about Ben Shapiro as a rhino, cuckservative, okay? And I agree. Guys like Salty Cracker, Mr. Obvious, uh, fucking Liberal Hive Mind, these guys are all normie as it fucking gets. All their shit is baseline, downstream from Fox News, Controlled oppo bullshit, okay? I'm not saying these guys are strictly controlled oppo, except for Salty Cracker. But um, most of them, their opinions are 100% based on mainstream news. So just because they're on YouTube and they're not corporatized doesn't mean they're not mainstream, okay? Oftentimes, you can tell you're over the target when you're pissing off the mainstream. But also, pissing off the mainstream doesn't necessarily mean your opinion's or anywhere remotely right or admirable in your milk toast piece of shit who's an unwatchable garbage merchant. Uh, Tim Pool is an example of that, where I think Tim Pool has reformed largely, but he's still unwatchable. And he's turned from a liberal shill to a centrist shill to uh, I make money by being an alarmist. Which I can't really judge because I'm an alarmist. But the thing is, I'm telling you what you should actually be alarmed by. And it's not a civil war with the left. It's a civil war with your own government and the establishment. That's what differentiates me from Tim Pool, okay? I, I despise all of the above, really. But the point is that I really want to hammer home for you is, do you think Crowder didn't know who the Daily Wire were? He did a lot of collaborative content with these people. He never had a crossword to say about any of these Daily Wire characters until he was about to get financially in bed with them and didn't like the deal and felt slighted. Because they were offering him, I think, $50 million for four years, but it was $50 million to pay his own team, his entire team, including himself. It's not just his salary. And to produce his own shows out of that funds... And then the Daily Wire basically owns his soul and gets to brand, uh, uh, basically iron their brand on his ass. You know, it's, it's basically what a record company deal is like. They're like, hey, we own your soul and you're probably not going to make anywhere near as much money as you think. But we're going to expand your reach. And why a guy as already popular as Crowder needed to get in bed with these people to expand his reach is ludicrous. Uh, the dude is massively successful already. So when people say, oh, it's a mis mischaracterization to say this is about money, it was 100% about money. It was 100% about money. If you think Crowder didn't know 
who the fuck these Daily Wire pricks were until he was about to sign on the dotted line, don't make me fucking laugh. That's absurd. He knew these people. He knows what they do. He knows what they promote. He knows the fucking the bylines and the fucking taglines and the fucking way of presenting news they do, the things they focus on, okay? And I still get people telling me, like, oh, you should Matt, watch Matt Walsh. She's based. Again, just because somebody is staunchly anti-trans does not mean they're based. That is acceptable edginess. It is within the, far within the acceptable realm of conservative edginess. The only thing that Crowder's done that's even remotely outside of that line is election denialism, okay? You know, the whole 2020 thing, can't talk about it, blah, blah, blah. He went and dared to talk about it and got fucked over hard. But the thing is, is that edgy? Just because there has been this mass establishment push to say, don't talk about it, don't talk about it, safest and securest election that's ever been in the world. Keep in mind that shortly after that election, there was a national poll done that showed like, what, 78% of Republicans and 30% of Democrats did not, you know, believe that the election was had no fraud, okay? I'm just saying that, that that was a poll that was done. And I don't know how many of those people changed their opinions. I haven't changed mine. I don't know anybody who's changed their opinion, but there has been a significant, highly successful chilling effect caused by these, you can't deny it, don't do anything as voter suppression, however they want to justify the rules. You can't talk about the subject. And Crowder did and got fucked for it. That's as edgy as he got. But again, is that an edgy opinion where he had to convince people of something that was not mainstream? Or was that opinion mainstream, but a talking about it was fucking illegal, basically? Answer me that question. The answer is the latter. So, personally, and I'm not saying you shouldn't watch Crowder. I used to watch Crowder. His content's often entertaining. He's a funny guy. But he doesn't talk about what I think is important anymore he just talks about the regular fucking rinky dink wedge issue bullshit for the most part and then sometimes i find is you know it's hard to get through a whole show of his because he's boring me to death tim pool is that times a billion okay crowder is a golden entertainment god and a master of information dispersal compared to tim pool the the popularity of tim pool is a, as abhorrent in 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 non-understandable, incomprehensible to me as the popular popularity of, say, Ethan Ralph. Or not Ethan Ralph, excuse me, um, Ethan Klein. Although, Ethan Ralph <laughs> still applies. But I mean, like, it doesn't make any sense why people watch this guy, because he's fucking terminally boring. He's not an intelligent person. And the people he brings on are also boring, and he has boring conversations with these people. And people just tune in. Like, I feel like I'm a long-winded person, but I try to talk fast, I try not to repeat myself, and I try to cram information in. What drives me insane about Tim Pool is he takes what's five minutes of content and stretches it to 25 minutes and beyond which, by just repeating itself. It's just basically like, oh man, that's crazy, and um, you know, I'm not this and I'm not that, and as a as a mixed race guy from Chicago. I had this experience with this subject and it's like the same thing over and over again. And it's like, if you watch one week of Tim pool content, you've watched a year of his content because unless some really major news story comes out, he's saying the same shit over and over again. Like ugh, it's outrageous, but I, I generally support Mark Dice. I don't really like Crowder. I do 100% challenge his motivation to ever join Daily Wire in the first place. They are the fucking evil empire. They are the fucking devil. And the fact that he even considered joining them and then really balked and threw a fit because, like Mark Dice said, he'd lost all his Blaze money, was going to secure a deal with the Daily Wire. The deal was shit. He backed out of that, had to start his mug club all over again, and decided to boost his appeal by going against the Daily Wire. And I would say... You should go against the Daily Wire anyways, because fuck them. <laughs> They're fucking garbage. They're completely Zionist fucking global elite, like pro-wars for everything, pro-wars for Israel, pro-wars for oil, pro-wars pro to stop dictators and shit. Dude, everybody's got a fucking dictator right now. I can't think of a country that's free, to be honest with you. Not my country, America, not Canada. Uh, the EU is a fucking, the USSR reborn. 
Not Britain, obviously. Jesus Christ, what a fucking dysfunctional government. Not Australia. Not New Zealand. Not Russia. Not Ukraine. These all seem like the bad guys to me. But it's not like an anti-statist thing. It's just like, oh wow, imagine if these weren't run by corrupt criminals. Maybe it would be cool. Maybe I would support that state. But there's no such state, guys. So that's why I can't, like, applaud somebody just because they're like, oh, yeah, the Democrats are clearly insane, which means we, the Republicans, are the good guys. No, you're fucking not. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a tired, dead meme, but it's still the truth. Every vote you make in a, in a Democratic, you know, representative republic or whatever, parliamentary system, don't care. You're voting for the lesser of two evils. And it's not like a little evil and a lot evil, it's a lot evil, and the death of the human race is, like, what you're fucking voting for, and it's like, why wouldn't you be blackpilled, okay, why wouldn't you just find it whenever you see a slap fight between a neocon fucking shill and a Ziocon fucking shill that you can't, that's, you're not allowed to say fuck the both of them, but fuck the Daily Wire more, but also fuck Steven Crowder, like, I shouldn't be talking any longer about this subject, but I hope this makes sense, the sentiment that I have, where it's, like, impossible for me to relate to anybody in the conversation, because, like, I literally was in this conversation, and I was like, uh, you know, Crowder is a bitch diva, and, you know, he really did fucking only back out because of money, and they're like, oh, Kern, it sounds like a Jewish name. No, first, no. <laughs> There's two places that name can come from, Scotland and Austria. Okay, no. Second of all, again, just because I shit talked Crowder does not automatically make me a Shapiro buttgoy. Not true. And it's just like, did none of you people learn anything arguing with people on the internet for the past 10 years? Do you at least know? Like, everybody knows what a straw man is. Do you know what a false dichotomy is? What if they're both the bad guy? Anyway, thanks for watching.